Japan is a megalithic culture. Many of the megaliths in Japan have never really been properly studied. This doesn't happen naturally. This is a man-made structure. Unless there's any doubt that it's man-made, let's get up close and look at it. It's made of individual blocks of stone. Having gone to all the work of creating huge megaliths like this, they wouldn't have wasted them. Imagine standing before a vast network of subterranean caverns, extending thousands of square meters deep into the earth, carved from the unique volcanic tuff known as Oya Stone. When these caverns at the Oya Stone Quarry in Utsunomiya were first created, it seemed nearly impossible for humans of that era to shape such an immense and complex structure, yet somehow they did, with nothing more than rudimentary tools and sheer human effort. I want to know what else is going to be found that hasn't been investigated yet at all. We're just touching the edge of a huge mystery. Did this really happen? Or was there more at play here than meets the eye? Fast forward to today, and despite our advanced technology and engineering prowess, replicating such a feat remains a formidable challenge. This marvel of both natural formation and human endeavor invites us to explore its depths, uncovering the secrets held within its echoing chambers and imposing walls. I think we're confronted by an enormous mystery with megalithic sites all around the world, uh, and we don't understand them properly. The Oya Stone Quarry, with its deep historical roots in Japan's architectural landscape, offers a fascinating glimpse into the evolution from localized resource extraction to significant industrial use. The exact discovery date of the quarry isn't well documented, but evidence suggests that small-scale extraction of Oya Stone began around the Heian period. I think the dating of quite a number of megalithic sites needs to be reconsidered. It quickly became popular for its unique properties, particularly its ease of carving when freshly quarried, which made it ideal for constructing religious structures like temples and shrines, as well as for creating detailed statues for these sites. As we move into the Edo period, the role of Oya stone expanded dramatically. This was a time of relative peace under the Tokugawa shogunate, marked by urbanization and the burgeoning need for more durable building materials. Oya stone, known for its enhanced fire resistance, became a critical resource in constructing robust fire-resistant walls, particularly in Edo, modern-day Tokyo, which was prone to frequent fires. Wildfires are what you expect when you have a bit of a comet air bursting uh, up above you. The quarry's activities intensified with technological advancements in mining, such as the introduction of better chiseling tools and more systematic methods for removing large stone blocks. The expansion of cities during this period necessitated large quantities of durable materials, and Oya stone was extensively used not just for building walls, but also for bridges and other infrastructure projects that required materials that could withstand both the elements and the threat of fire. As demand surged, the shogunate implemented stricter regulations to manage the quarry operations effectively, ensuring the extraction rates were sustainable and that the stone remained available for future generations. When we compare Oya stone with European limestone, which was used for similar purposes, we notice both materials share the property of hardening over time, which is ideal for constructions meant to endure. However, while limestone in Europe was often chosen for both its practical and aesthetic qualities, Oya stone's use in Japan was deeply intertwined with the country's cultural and religious practices, reflecting a unique blend of utilitarian and spiritual values. This distinction highlights not only the functional importance of Oya stone, but also its role in shaping the cultural heritage of Japan. The Oya stone quarry is celebrated for its production of Oya stone, a unique type of green tough volcanic rock. Known for its distinctive qualities, this stone has been a cornerstone in Japanese architecture and art for centuries. Let's dive deep into its rich historical tapestry and uncover some fascinating details along with a compelling theory. Tracing back to around 800 AD during the early Heian period, the operations at the Oya stone quarry began in an era marked by the consolidation of power in the Japanese imperial court and a cultural boom influenced heavily by the Chinese Tang dynasty aesthetics. Initially, Oya stone was primarily used for constructing the foundations and lower structures of buildings in local villages, largely because of its accessibility and the ease with which it could be carved when freshly quarried, what makes Oya stone particularly intriguing is its unique physical property. It is relatively soft when first quarried, but hardens upon exposure to air. 
This feature allowed ancient builders to initially carve it with ease, and as it hardened it would transform into a durable structural element. Not only did its warm beige to light grey hues and porous texture enhance the natural aesthetics of traditional Japanese buildings, but it also provided excellent insulation properties. As the Heian period progressed, the cultural center of Japan shifted to Kyoto, increasing the architectural demand for Oya stone, possibly spurred by its fire-resistant properties, an essential feature in an era prone to wooden structure fires. By the late Heian period, the stone's reach extended beyond local regions, finding its way into more significant and prestigious construction projects across Japan, such as temples, shrines and statues. I can't help thinking time capsule, that there was an intention to preserve this. Ancient texts often highlight its use in substantial state-sponsored construction projects, suggesting a growing importance in the architectural landscape of the time. The rising demand for Oya stone led to a significant expansion of the quarry operations. Quarrying techniques evolved from simple manual methods to more organized mining activities involving larger labor forces. This expansion not only catered to the increasing architectural demands, but also became a focal point for local economic development, providing numerous jobs and contributing to the growth of surrounding communities. An intriguing theory about the Oya stone quarry is that it was discovered and initially developed under the auspices of the Imperial Family of Japan. This theory suggests that the Imperial Family might have used the quarry to demonstrate their divine right to rule by constructing temples and palaces with this unique stone. Ancient cultures all around the world preserved a memory of a high civilization. The frequent use of Oya stone in imperial and noble projects during the Heian period supports this theory. The distinctiveness of the stone and the grandeur it imparted to buildings would have symbolized the celestial and exalted status of the emperor, aligning perfectly with the imperial ambitions of the time. This fascinating hypothesis adds an additional layer of historical and cultural significance to the already rich narrative of the Oya stone quarry. Nestled in Utsunomiya, Tochigi Prefecture, the Oya stone quarry offers more than just a peek into the world of mining. It presents a fascinating interplay of geology, history, and acoustics. Let's delve into the intriguing details of its underground caverns, their extensive history, and unique characteristics. Spanning an impressive 20,000 square meters, these caverns form a vast subterranean network that has been shaped over centuries. In some areas, they plunge as deep as 60 meters, equivalent to a 20-story building. This vast and varied landscape not only offers a glimpse into the Earth's depths, but also tells the tale of its past through the very walls that form it. Etched with the marks of pickaxes and chisels, the cavern walls narrate the history of mining techniques that evolved through the ages. Occasionally, miners have left behind tools and artifacts, which have been preserved and are now part of the quarry's historical tapestry. The caverns also display an array of natural and man-made formations, from varied color strains and vein patterns to different mineral compositions, each adding a layer to the story of the region's geological history. Beyond their historical and visual appeal, these caverns are known for their exceptional acoustic properties. The porosity and density of the Oya stone allow for sound to be absorbed and dampened, creating an environment with minimal echo and clear sound quality. Drawing a comparison to the ancient underground cities of Cappadocia in Turkey, both carved directly into volcanic rock, highlights interesting contrasts. While Oya's caverns were primarily used industrially for mining, Cappadocia's were designed for habitation and protection, equipped with living quarters, churches, and even ventilation shafts. An intriguing theory about the Oya stone quarry suggests that its extensive network and depth could have offered strategic military advantages during historical conflicts. The caverns, with their complexity and depth, might have served as excellent hiding spots or secret passages, a theory supported by Japan's historical use of landscape features in military strategy. Moreover, the Oya stone quarry has caught the eye of the film and television industry due to its dramatic and otherworldly ambience. For instance, Martin Scorsese's silence used the haunting backdrop of the caverns to portray the rugged landscapes of 17th century Japan, enhancing the grim atmosphere of the story. While not actually filmed at the quarry, the scenes within the fortress-like environments of Inception evoke a similar monumental scale and maze-like interiors that one can associate with the Oya stone quarry's vast network.